Randy, uh, in front right here. Uh, before we get into the fight talk, what did you make of the uh, welcome to the country uh, ceremony with the dancing in the park and everything? Uh, I thought that was cool as hell. Yeah, I thought that was dope. Um, it's a country rich in culture, you know, so uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was pretty funny. They had us bouncing around, acting like kangaroos and all that, <laughs> you know, and emus, but it was cool. It was a cool experience. And your opponent, Jack, he was there too. Is it weird being around him in settings like that, or is it just you view this as business? Um, Not necessarily. I've been here, done this so many different times. It's uh, not necessarily. I just view it as business. I'm not really too worried about that. And there's obviously a lot of hype around Jack, especially in this part of the world. He's obviously, he's looked very, very good in his, in his first few fights, but I think people might not realize how long you've been fighting in the UFC. Do you kind of feel like you're being overlooked in this fight, given how all the hype around Jack in his home country? Um, you know, shiny new toy. That's how I, I always see it, shiny new toy. Um, and all the hype is well-deserved. He's really good. Um, it's just, I am being overlooked. But listen, I've been overlooked my entire career. That's just the nature of my story, I guess. So I don't really too look into it too much. I just take it as it is, you know, another guy. Um, that I need to get out of there. It's one of those situations where you got to go and get it if you want it. You know, I think I've been here a long time. I've put in a lot of work and anyone else on a four fight win streak and beating the guys that I've beaten or in my situation, seven and one in my last eight or six and one in my last seven, anyone else would have already been fighting the top 15. I didn't have to take this fight. You know what I mean? But I didn't want to sit around and wait. I wanted to go out there and go make a statement. So Come, why not? How better not to do it than to how? How much better to, it is? Yeah, how not to do? How, what's the easiest way to do that? Is to come into someone's hometown and um, and beat them. A young prospect like this, so it is what it is. Saying you think you've been overlooked your whole career, why do you think that is? Given your like how impressive your wins have been lately, um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, sometimes we got a guy that has uh, three KOs back to back or four KOs back to back. You know, that's impressive. I guess. You're only as good as your last one in this game. You know what I mean? And my last my last one, I didn't go out there and start somebody up. You know what I mean? So they just judge you off of that. But if you know what you're looking at, you know this is not an easy fight for anyone. So uh, I don't know. People, what have you done for me lately? That's what it is. Sure. And uh, unrelated to this fight, but obviously there's a lot of hype around, you know, the contender series winners and everything. There's not too many winners of Dana White looking for a fight left in the UFC. Do you? kind of view yourself as like the, one of the last people to like fly that flag and represent that show 100 percent. every time i fight so that's what i say it's 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 dana white contender series versus uh versus the looking for a fight you know so yeah i still got the belt i took it from mickey gall <laughs> you know i'm still rocking it um and so when the fight's all said and done what does the headline read after this fight after your fight um randy brown takes perth by storm and then final one for me, unrelated to this fight. Are you going to be able to watch the Super Bowl at all, being all the way over? In uh, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. You got winning that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Randy. Yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on the Usman and Leon Edwards fight. That's no. happening. Um, I'm looking forward to that, man. Both those guys are, are tremendous athletes, and both of them – are super inspirational, you know, from their stories and just uh, the way that they, the way that the work that they've put in and the, the competition that they've faced. I think that, uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. Made a best man win. That's all I got. And the main event as well for this event, who do you, who you put him for there? Um, I like both guys. I like both guys. Um, I'd love to see Volk get it done. I think Volk, uh, Volkanovski's a, a really good dude. I think he has a good chance. Um, tough task for sure, but I do believe if he's able to continuously stop those takedowns, or not even stop them, because I don't think he will, but I do think if he's able to get up continuously and still, you know, show that purpose, perseverance, I think he gets it done. Okay, Randy, uh, just wanted to ask: uh, Are you ready to perhaps be the least liked fighter during the card because you're taking on a local boy in Jack Della? They can't fight for them. Them not liking me doesn't matter to me. You could not like me all you want, you know, but you're going to love me after my performance. That's it, you know, and I understand it. But at the end of the day, it's just booze. People always say that. It's like, oh, 
whoa, especially when I fought in Brazil, I was like, oh man, you go enemy territory, going to Brazil. And I'm like, what y'all want me to do? What do you want me to say? Like, they're just not like they're going to be throwing shit in the cage and kicking. Remember when Henzo Gracie fought? Henzo Gracie fought uh, some guy in Brazil and they like stabbing him through the cage. <laughs> people make it seem like that's what it's going to be. It's just people yelling. If he wants to yell, they're going to yell and boo me. That's fine. But the fight's the fight. They can't fight for him. And uh, do you think Jack Della's on your level? I think he's a great fighter. I think he's never faced anyone at my level yet, but he's a tremendous athlete. And um, I think he's he's really, really good and he has a ton of potential. But I think we're catching him at a good time. And finally, the obligatory Australian question. Uh, what's been your favorite thing about Australia? Everybody said kangaroos, right? <laughs> um, we went to the zoo and we saw the quokas. Um, I did get to hang out with some kangaroos. Um, in particular, I really like uh, Perth, though. I like how clean the streets are. The streets are really clean. Um, I really love, uh, everybody does the speed limit. In New York, we do not do not do the speed limit at all. So uh, it was cool to see how, how everyone is. Everyone's really polite, you know, so I really like the people. It was cool. And I don't want to correct you because you scare me, but it's Quokka. Is it a Quokka? Yes. No, Quokka. Why, do I, why do I scare you? <laughs> Kuwaka. Why do I scare you? Uh, just because you are very talented and you could kill me if you wanted to, but you don't want to, which is great. And we'd love to have you here in Perth. Uh, and just, uh, I just finally, I just wanted to wish you best of luck from Thank everyone you. in Perth. We do love you, even though the booze will come on Sunday. All right, who are you rooting for? Uh, I, Jack Della, because you only have a few days where you could kill me. Jack lives here. All right. Well, I might kill you before I leave. Damn it. <laughs> Thank you. Just what, like you've said that you're diligent and strategic. Is the so I imagine that you've looked at Jack quite a lot and analyzed him. Where do you see the major weaknesses in his game? I'm not really just gonna come up here and give you my plan. I'm supposed to just come up here and give you my plan because you asked. Um, I guess we'll just have to see. I did watch him quite a bit. You know, I think he's talented, um, but I do think that he has a great skill set that is good. The skill set that he needs to beat me, and I think that. I have the skill set and the style that is needed to beat him. It's a matter of who can endure the longest and who can persevere and who can execute their game plan for the longest. So it's going to be a matter. It's going to be a battle of attrition and uh and discipline. Over here, Randy. Um, you talk about the booze not really affecting you because I can't fight for him in the cage. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of that, when you're fighting at home, do the cheering and stuff affect you much as well, or do you kind of just? What block it all out when you're walking into that cage? It's on a person to person basis, I believe. I believe that uh, some people use that energy to put a battery in their back. You know what I mean? It's also a lot of pressure. Some people use it, it affects people negatively because it's a lot of pressure. It's your friends, your families. You don't want to get hurt in front of, you know, your parents, in front of, you know, your teachers and people that you that's known you your whole life. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh factors, but it just depends on who the person is. I'm pretty easygoing and just, I don't really have much of an ego. I'm just kind of just, meh. So for me, I'm nonchalant. Nothing really, nothing really bothers me too tough. So I'm chilling. And you haven't um, traveled much outside of the United States for your fights. And this is probably the furthest you've traveled. Um, does um, factoring in the time difference and climate difference come into your training camps and acclimatizing and stuff like that? Yeah, that was a major factor. But uh, we, we took that into consideration early. So I made sure that um, I downloaded some apps, you know, that kind of helped me with the, did some research to help me with the jet lag. So I was doing something called light therapy, you know, leading up to leaving. So the jet lag didn't bother me too much. And also I got here, I was here since like the 31st or something like that. So I've been here for a little bit. Um, yeah, so I've been, I'm adjusted pretty good. And last question, when you do travel, do you, You've been doing a lot of touristy stuff, and I caught you shopping just after the tourists, or the um, media welcome as well, yeah. at Culture Kings. Nice. Um, nice. Just, oh, just, my guy. <laughs> um, just going around and taking in the city that you're visiting, does that kind of just something you have to do to help you kind of relax and leading into fight week? Um, it's, it's not something that I have to do, but I think it's something that, that's cool and it should be done because – Personally, I don't want to make things bigger than what they really are. I mean, it is a great moment. This is a huge moment and it's beautiful. And But I was taught by my coach and my sensei from a long time ago at a young age. It's just all of this is just glitz and glams. All of this is just it's great. And it's a part of what we need all of this. Right. But 
what it comes down to it, ultimately, the only things that matters is the fight of me and this guy fighting. So for me, I want it to be as much as like I'm back home. So me and my friends, we're hanging out, you know, we're we at the house just kicking it, you know, and we're playing among us, you know what I mean, in different rooms, people yelling. So it's just I want it to feel like I'm home. And then when it's time to go train or go fight, I go fight, you know. So, yeah, I'm walking around. I'm shopping. I'm not cooped up just thinking about the fight the whole time. I'm just chilling. So it's not that I have to do it, but I think it's just better to just hang out. Going off that right here. Um, you say you focus on the fight, but it's like a big opportunity, right? Like especially tomorrow you have the press conference and you'll yeah. be out there with the two title fights. Like do you think about – maybe this is the first time certain fans will see me on this platform and like, I want to make a good account of myself or make an impression or do you just go there and be yourself? You can't help but think about that for sure. For sure. You think about that. And someone like me, I think I'm a showman at heart. I want to go out there and put on great performances. You know, I want people to enjoy my fight, you know? Um, But it's not at the forefront. It's not at the forefront. Ultimately I need to get the dub to move forward and continue to change my life and my family's life. Thank you, guys.